All right, so email marketing, and the main thing about email marketing is converting your database. I was talking to Bill earlier. He has 8,000 contacts, which is a ton of people to email, so you can get a very good response out of that. Um, but who here has a bunch of contacts like, I believe, what was your name again? Iris? Iris. Iris has sitting in her desk with the rubber band on it. Sure, we all have them, right? You know, tons of business cards at Mixers, and we never do anything with them. Those business cards are gold. You know, I was sharing with a little bit earlier that just with my email marketing alone, I mean, I was able to recruit a couple of agents by just by doing that because I was sending out the emails. They've been to a couple of my classes, but realistically, that's why they kept in contact with me. You know, because I was always in their face, constantly, sh you know, throwing them all my good content. So it's all value-added marketing at the end of the day, right? So when you're emailing people, you're not going to e be emailing them junk. You're going to be emailing them uh, great pieces of value. So for me, my value when it comes to agents is providing great tech, great education, great ways to market yourself. Okay, so when you're going through and looking at your business plan, you need to figure out with, with a fine scope, what is it that you're, who you're marketing to and what do they really need? What are they going to respond to? And with email marketing, there's a lot of companies out there. The one that I, ch that I choose to use for the majority of the time is MailChimp. Now, MailChimp is free up to 2,000 subscribers and you can send out 12,000 emails per month. Now, for probably almost all of you except Bill, that's going to work out very well. Um, but even myself, I just upgraded it to a, a monthly plan. So my monthly plan is $15 a month. It's really nothing. Um, and I'm able to send out unlimited emails as many as I want to my entire list. Okay, so it's a very, uh, very cost effective way to do it. Especially when, you know, if you can mail, if you can mail something to someone versus email it to them, what's going to be more effective? $15 a month or maybe $300, you know, email is much more effective. And, my, and most of us would rather get email anyways just because we're so connected into our phone, right? Most of us have an iPhone or a Blackberry. We're constantly looking at our phone, checking emails, everything like that. Okay. So the agenda for today is to create an account, which is very simple to do. We're going to be creating and importing a list. Okay, these are all your contacts, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Creating an email, which is a live demonstration, so you guys can see exactly how I do it, so you don't get lost, because that's probably the toughest part of the whole thing. Scheduling emails, which is very important okay because you can start putting things on autopilot you can make emails for the entire month schedule them in one night knock it out and then you don't have to worry about doing it, your email for the rest of the month okay so you doesn't just it doesn't become time consuming for you and then reading analytics which is the best part okay don't you think you oh you want to see me sorry <laughs> don't you think it'd be very wise to know who is opening up your email right what times are opening it you know what companies are opening it what city perhaps male, female, you can put all this data into your list and you can track every single piece of it. So that's why I really, am, I mean, I've always been very analytical when it comes to things. And this is a great tool for me to be able to do that. Okay, because analytics is the key to your success really in this business right now. You know, the analytics is going to be the difference between you doing two deals a month to doing 10 deals a month. It's because you fine tune it and you find out where to put the pressure and where not to. Okay. So if you go to MailChimp.com, you're just going to go ahead and sign up for free at the top. If you want to start with a paid account, you can, but I recommend for most of you to start off with a free account because most of you don't have more than 2,000 subscribers, and most of you, I'm going to say, aren't going to be sending out more than 12,000 emails a month. So this is really a great tool for you at no cost. And then once you're ready to upgrade, the only difference is you get unlimited emails per month, um, and then you got to pay per your list size. Okay. Once you create your account, you'll be able to go in and go to your lists. Okay, lists is the important part of this. Okay, lists are going to have all your detailed information: the client's first name, their last name, phone number, email address, company they work for. If you want male, female information, location information, you can put all that stuff in here, and you can really track it that way. So, however, it's specific to your business is where you want to focus in at. Okay. So Rosa does termite. She sends out to all different counties, but if LA County is hitting really hard or Orange County starts to hit really hard, that's a you know pretty red flag that she needs to hit that area much harder than what she's doing because they're they're much more interactive with what she's sending out. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So lists. The next page you'll see is where it says create list. That's where you're going to go. New list or groups. You're just going to again click on create list, and I'm going like this so you guys can get it all you don't lose me I don't lose you 
and then this is your new list so your list name your default uh, from name so your list name is going to be you know past clients uh, website leads you can make as many lists as you want and separate each list as you want okay so Bill has 8,000 contacts I'm sure those are all past clients so he's just gonna make a list call it past clients for me my list is is agents because this is my entire agent list that I, that I market to okay for all my past clients I have a past client list whatever you're going after that's what you want that's what you want to name it because again you're gonna make different lists for different people you could have um, old leads right you get people that sign up to your website that never turn out but you still want to keep them on your database so you can still send them this out so these are old and dead leads or cold leads whatever you want to call it so okay. this list is for, this is for one, group. one group exactly now you can segment it if you want to but I don't recommend doing that at least to start it's easier just to create new lists keep it, keep it organized yeah and then your, your default from name this is going to always default to however, however you want this to send out. So I think my emails all send out as excellence real estate. That's where I want my emails coming from. I don't want them to say Jonathan Villascusa because I'm just the trainer. The company is the one that's actually sending this out. So that's how I do it. For my past clients, yes, it's me. And I'm actually changing it now to the Villascusa team because I want to create more of a brand versus myself. Okay, so you got to be particular in what you want to do. And you want to be consistent with it. You don't want to be constantly changing Jonathan Viascusa, Excellence Real Estate, Viascusa team. You don't want to flip flop. Branding is very important in this business. Okay. Your default reply to email is what you're going to set up. So whatever email you want them to reply to. Okay. So if you want them to reply to your work email, fine. If you have another, you know, info or you know, generic respond to email, whatever the case may be, you put that in there. Your default subject line. Can you guys see this all right? Too, it's too light, huh? Yeah. Let me uh, turn off the light. Is that better now? Sure. Kind of. Let me see if I can adjust this. It's about as good as I can get it. Again, this is all getting recorded, so don't don't stress too much. So the fourth one is going to be your default subject. Put this in all caps. Put always change this line. Okay, all caps. Put squiggly lines next to it. Always change this line because I've done it before. I put I had a default uh, uh, subject name on there, and I sent out an email with the default subject name. Okay, for and it was something completely irrelevant to what my email was about. It's the biggest mistake I ever made when I sent out that email. You don't want to do that. So put always change those lines so when you're going through this, you don't think you've already written a subject line because it's telling you to always change this line. Okay. So it's just it's just, you know, my own trick that I've learned. Okay. Uh, okay, at the at the next part it's gonna say copy permission reminder. So this is just letting them know how they got in your list. So I put down here, I either met you at an event, you you know, whatever the case is, you know, past client. Uh, you know, you signed up through our website for more information. Whatever, or however you met them is where you want to put in the list. Okay, and it's just reminding them how they got on there so they know it's not spam. Okay, and then on the bottom you have to put your uh, business location address. So I put this as my address, but wherever your address is at, go ahead and put that. That's that's to uh, comply with the can spam laws. Okay, and then notifications. Check down at the bottom. Uh, I usually do a daily summary and one by one. Okay. Yes, it'll show down at the bottom in the in the, in the footer. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna be like way up there, but it, it has to be down there. So it, it's a legitimate it's company, business. exactly. And if you want to, you could probably even put a PO box if you didn't want to give out your business address. You could probably do that, or if you don't have one because you work out of home, whatever the case may be, you could probably use a PO address as well. And then email format. Uh, you can check the box, but I don't. I always want to leave it uh, where I check the box manually for every single person is I want to have HTML. And the reason you want to have HTML is because most people nowadays have a smartphone so they can get these nice, beautiful emails with color and pictures and video and all that. Um, and they're view most of the time, they're probably viewing it on their laptop as well. So you, it's most of the time, 90% of the time, you're going to be sending it out as HTML. Because no people, nobody really gets text emails anymore unless it's you know a work-related email. Um, 
and mobile. Uh, most of us have enough, a smartphone now that knows how to configure the email to fit on the screen, so you don't have to worry about it, okay? So just leave it as HTML. Uh, your list was created. Okay, after you're done creating your list, you're gonna go into import it now. So I put on here where it says test, you would click on the right hand side to the arrow pointing to the wheel. You would click on that, it would say import subscribers. And on this list is where you're gonna have your, your CSV file or Excel document. Everyone know what that is? No one knows? Okay. So I'll show you real fast what it basically looks like. If I can get one in time. I think this is a list. Let me see. Okay, this isn't it. But basically, your Excel work, your Excel uh, spreadsheet would look like this. But in one in box A, you would label it from or first name, and the B box on top, you would label it last name and so on and so forth. So any, any category that you would want is what you would put in there. And then each individual line, you know, two, three, four, five, and six, that would be all their information going across. So let me see, like, I can't zoom in on this, I'm sorry. But you get the basic idea, okay? Yes? If you already created a database for yourself on uh, Excel. Excel is, is CSV. Oh. That's how you do it, yeah. You're gonna be upload. I just wanted you to see kind of how you, how you do it so you can see what the document is because some of us don't know what a Excel document looks like. But again, you want first name, last name, I like company name, phone number, email address. If you want their location, you can put the location in it. If you want their office address, maybe. Uh, whatever, whatever information you want, the more is, the more is better um, just because you can track things a lot easier. Okay, again, you can, you can fine tune your list however you want. But for myself, it's first name, last name, company, phone number, and email address. That's what I want for myself. And I can import it, right? Correct, yeah. So after you're done, you create your list, you'd save it because it sounds like most of you have business cards, not a list yet. So you go and make your list in an Excel document, put all this information in there. It's probably going to take you a good day to do it all, mm -hmm. um, but it's well worth it. And then after you're done setting it up, you can go in to where your list is at. On the right-hand side, again, you'll see the gear. You'll click on that, it'll say import subscribers, and that's where you go to import your list. So the next slide, this is where you get to see it. So you can upload a file, you can copy and paste from Excel. If you have other companies that you're using already, you can, like how it says on our Salesforce, you know, Google Docs, whatever, you can import automatically from them. But for most of us, we're gonna be starting from scratch, so just create it on an Excel document and import it that way. Go with this part? Not going too fast? Okay. <clears throat> so again, upload a file real easy. You're just going to browse for it. So again, I would make sure you uh, know where you're saving your list to so you don't uh, uh, misplace it. And then there's another box down on the bottom left that says auto update my existing list. In the parentheses, it says takes longer. You always want to do this cause, because you might accidentally put the same person in twice or three times, especially you have a ton of cards. You're not going to remember who you put in. And then even if even after the fact you're going to events and you're putting these people same people in, you always want to auto update your existing list even though it takes a few minutes longer. That way, if they have a new phone number or they change companies or um, they change their email address, it's going to op update on that list. Okay, you're not going to send them two different emails. You're going to send them one email. Okay, and I have people send me to the same email. They forget they put me on their list, and I, you know it's kind of redundant getting the same email twice from a person and probably a little bit annoying, you know, to get, to get something from everyone twice or maybe three times. <clears throat> so after you're, after you're done uploading it, this is what it's going to look like. You get to select which of these columns you want. Can you guys see this? I wish I could zoom in on this more. I'm sorry, guys. But the first box is, uh, as, as it says, preferred format. Nothing I'm going to do there. You're going to go through each of these <clears throat> boxes. You know what? Let me log in online so you guys can see this better. I feel like I'm, I'm not giving you the best. Uh, 
Where was I at now? WordPress is the way to go. I'm telling you, someday I'm going to hunt the developers down. They are going to die. Okay, sorry guys. I want to just show you guys really quickly how to do this. Does the program automatically detect duplicates and purge them? Or yes. You were talking about that. I kind of zoned Yeah, okay. yeah, it does. I'll do all that. Okay. Uh, shoot. Let's see. Hold on. I'm going to make a new list. Sorry, guys. So you can, if you want to watch as I do this, we'll, we'll go through this real quick. So create list. I'm going to create a new list. It's just going to be called test. I want you guys to be able to see this. Okay, so here we go. So you can see all the information. So this has both their full name. So if I wanted to, I can create a new uh, new column name and name it full name. But I really don't need that information. Okay, because when I'm making these mailers, I'm going to be classifying their first name in most of the mailers. So I'm going to go ahead and just skip that one. Oops. It won't be imported. So first name, Willie, I'm going to say OK. Middle name, I don't need that, so I'm going to skip it. Last name, okay. sorry, this is what I wanted to do. Can you guys see that better now? Yes. OK. So last name, that's their last name according to my list, so I'm going to say OK. This is nothing, so I'm going to skip it. So if I wanted to know their city, where they're came, coming from, you know, I can change it to, uh, let's see. I can change it to, uh, you know, location. I can save that now. So now I'm going to get the location. If I wanted state, I could put state. So let's put state in there, and I'll save that too. Let's say, you know, zip code. Again, you can keep classifying all the information that you want inside your list. It's once, you're in the list right? once you're in the list, yeah. After you've imported it, it's going to tell you. It's going to ask you what is what is this column. You usually will get first name, last name, email address, but it doesn't know like company name or you know additional phone numbers or anything like that. Yeah. You know, maybe refer, who they were refer, referred by, where you met them, maybe is is what you want to track. So it doesn't do all that stuff. So you just have to specify it in the system. So I don't want to know the county, so I'll skip that. I don't need to know the ID, I'll skip that. So email address, it, it automatically caught the email address. Of course, I need that. Alternate email, skip it, and then that's done. So I'll skip that. So now I'm all done. I can upload my list. And now it says we're importing your list. And then usually I just put in, email me when it's done. And this list I think is a really large list, so it's probably going to take it a few minutes to upload. But that way you guys can just see how you how you manage your list after you get it into the system. Okay. You want to classify each column. Even though you named it on your Excel document, you're going to have to redo it again once you put it into MailChimp. Does that make sense? Not losing anyone? <clears throat> okay. Okay, and then at last but not least, you'll be able to see your list after you're done importing it. So you can see the growth of your entire list as you're going on. So from the beginning when I started this list in 2011, I've gone from uh, zero contacts. Now, now it's actually over 720. Okay, these are all organic people that I've met, people that I've done it. You know, at classes like this, I put them on my list. This isn't buying emails or anything like that. This is just real organic stuff. Um, that's probably the best way to do your, to build your list is to do it organically. That way you keep your bounce rates really low, you keep your unsubscribe rate really low, and you keep your open rates really high and your uh, click-through rate really high, which is something I'm going to get into uh, in just a minute. Okay, So I'll go with this part, creating your list and importing it, because that's really crucial to get getting started. You guys ready to make an email now? All right. Let's see. 
here and zoom out a little bit. So MailChimp's always changing their stuff. Bill and I were talking about that a little bit earlier. So on the left-hand side now, it's going to say campaigns. That's what you're going to want to click on after you're done uploading your list. And if you really wanted to, you real, real quick, you can kind of see how all the emails that I do. And usually for every event, I do three emails for it. You can see my subscribers. You can see that it, I've had a couple of unsubscribes since I've done this email. You can see my open rates. And this one today was is going to be lower because it, you know, I just sent it out two hours ago. And then you can see your click-through rate. So my click-through rate on this one was probably really low. Most of my click-through rates are a little bit higher in the two to three percent range. What does click-through mean? Uh, they're opening it, or they're clicking through. Or sorry, the click-through rate is when they open your email. They're doing a, a call to action. So my call to action on this is to attend. I want you to click on the attend button to go and sign up for a ticket. That's my goal. So for some of you, it might be, you know, signing up for attendance. Some of you might be, you know, whatever the case may be, looking at a new property that you sent out, looking at a new program <coughs> that you have. Whatever it is, you're going to have some type of goal. Your goal is not to just to send out pretty email. Your goal always is to have call to action. If, you're, if you don't have call to action, you might as well not even do it. Okay, it has to have call to action. You got to have an outcome of why you're doing it. You know, I don't believe sending out an email just to stay in front of their face is good enough. You got to have some real value behind it, something that they're going to be able to use, something that's going to, you know, benefit you on the end result. Okay. <coughs> so these are all my past events that you can, again, once you get going, you'll be able to kind of see them at, at a glance. On the top right, you'll be able to click on create campaign. Can, can you guys see that? Yeah, you can see that part so far. And I got two different lists, so I always send to my WordPress list. <coughs> Typically, I always I don't think I've ever sent 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 my list to a segment. Um, if your list gets large la large enough, you may want to, but even at 720, that's still not that large. Where you probably want to segment it down. Okay. Um, go ahead and click on next on the bottom right. Now you get to name your campaign. So naming your campaign is very simple. It's whatever you're sending out. So this is, you know, test run MailChimp class or whatever you want to call it. Okay. From name, default that I have it as Jonathan Viascusa, but I always change it back to excellence real estate. And you can see I put always change this line. Okay. Now the nice thing about MailChimp now is they just upgraded their system to where you can now test your subject lines to see if they're going to come up as spammy or non-spammy. Which was the one you said you always change? The Email subject, yeah. Emails. Yeah. So you, I, I always put always change this line, so when I read it, it no, I, I, I know to always change this line. I don't think there's text there and just send it off. You always want to change it, no matter what. So you can put, you know, uh, test run... MailChimp marketing session. And then if you want to, you can uh, research your subject line for this. I already know it's going to tell me it's too large. But I, what, I, what, it's, what it really wants you to do is it wants you to test out your keywords in the subject line itself. Okay, So test run might be one of them. So let's see if test run would, would come up well. No results found, so probably not a good subject line. What about marketing session? Come on. Why is it not coming up with anything? It's not working now? Just to annoy you. Yeah, you know, that's how it goes. Close. No, no, naming your campaign is for you. Okay, email subject is what they're going to see. When they get their email, it's going to say, open this email now, free gift inside, or 25% off your next order. Whatever your email subject line is, that's what it's going to be. They're going to see that. What you want to do, though, is test your 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 subject lines to see if they're going to work well or not. So that doesn't even come up. So let's see if I just put marketing. Okay. So if I just put marketing, it's going to give me some five-star 
keywords to use in my subject line now. So marketing, sales marketing is really good, marketing update, email marketing, marketing test, whatever it is. And it goes down and, show, and it goes all the way down to one star. So typically you want to stay at five stars, right? Because these have all been tested between thousands of people. You know, thousands of different companies have already used these, these subject lines and they test it, or sorry, they track it themselves to give you the best results. Because they're only going to do well from their company's standpoint if you do very well from your standpoint, right, and your business. So now you can change something around. So instead of marketing session, uh, I'm going to do test run, MailChimp, marketing, test, right? Real simple change. <coughs> and now, theoretically, I should get a higher open right now by using that that phrase, that word, okay? Down here at the bottom, it's going to say personalize the two field. You just leave this defaulted. It's automatically going to put their first name in the two field, okay? So you don't have to worry about it. Tracking. If all of you, uh, some of you might have Google Analytics, which I do, so I can track this with Google Analytics. All of my email always goes back to my website, okay? And all of you, if you're doing email, you should all make it go back to your website as well because that's where you want them to go, is to your website. Google Anal Analytics built into your email allows you to track your performance of the email back to your website. So you can see, okay, I've got 100 visitors coming from my email. Now they've hit this page and I got this many results from that. You can track every step of the way. Not just they opened it, they went to my website and I don't know if they went to it or not. You know, how can you how can you improve your website at that point? How can you improve your sign up rate if you don't know what they're doing? Okay, so again, I'm really analytical when it comes to all this stuff. So you always want to do that. Automatically your stuff will also track opens, track HTML clicks. You can set it to track uh, plain text uh, clicks. And then if you have like e-commerce, you can also do that. Some of you might be selling items online. You know, you can also do that as well, okay? Social media, I auto-tweet my campaign. Again, you always want to change this line. So my social media line is usually a little bit different. I usually put call to action in that line so that they automatically know, hey, I got to click on this to get it going, okay? And then same thing with Facebook. It automatically posts the entire email into Facebook. Oops. Okay, good with this part? All right, let's go to next. <coughs> now you get four different designs. You can do the drag and drop editor, my templates, basic, and pre-designed. I always go basic when I'm sending out new emails. I always start all my emails from scratch every single time because I'm always making them differently. But I do have templates for certain emails. You know, it's just the basics, okay, the, the basic layout. So I'm always going to be changing the picture and the content still. Okay, but basic for the majority of you is probably what you'll be using. If you want to send out easy things like, you know, uh, holidays like Fourth uh, of July, Hanukkah, Christmas, Thanksgiving, you can go to pre-designed. Okay, and pre-designed will automatically have all that info for you. All you got to do is change some of it around. It'll have the pictures and all that. So, okay. which one do you want to see? Uh, templates already on it. Yeah, so I'll do that one first. We'll go to pre-designed. <coughs> So you can click on categories. So they have holidays. They change it around again on me, so it's all brand new. Uh, let's just go to holidays. <laughs> How do they have this? It's pretty neat. Yeah. This sorry, this just changed on me. They used to have it a little little differently before. All right, here's a good one. I like I like sending these one out. Black Black Friday sale. This one I always find it work out very well. I'll go and look for all the Black Friday deals at that time of the year, and then I'll put all of them in my email, right? Check out these hot deals I found for, you know, TVs, shoes for women. So I try to hit, you know, both both genders. You know, guys like electronics, women like shoes and clothes. So you want to hit both targets, both groups. <coughs> so let's go to view this one. Let's just select it. <coughs> So here you go, here you can see something. So you can go ahead and change all this around. So you got this picture, you're probably gonna wanna change to shoes or a TV or a barbecue or whatever it is, okay? And you wanna change this whole email around. So we'll start off on the top. <coughs> on the top, it's gonna say, use this area to offer a short teaser of your email's content. Uh, text here will show in the preview area of some email clients. So just to show you what that means, if you look at your email, this is what they're going to see. So this is your from name. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. A little bit. I mean, was, yeah. So this is your from name. And this is that text that they're talking about. So ready for your attendees to arrive. 
that's that text. So that's where you can automatically start putting in some call to action, okay, to help them open up this email address, or sorry, this email, okay. Let me go back now. So that's what you want to put in here. So if this is Black Friday deals, you know, I'll put in uh, save hundreds with these coupons I've found for uh, you know 60 inch uh, LED TVs that's the hot thing and what are like, good women's shoes like Jimmy shoes sure. how much are those regularly don't you don't have 5, any 5,000 really they're that much yeah. Okay, so we'll just put, we'll just put, uh, so what's a, what's another good one? Steve Madden. Steve Madden, okay. So buy one, get one free, is that common? Okay, so and, uh, and, you know, I'll put, you know, and for the ladies, Steve Madden shoes, buy one, get one free. So got your attention now, call to action, you're probably going to open that email a little bit easier now. Hopefully at, right, at least, right? <coughs> on the top, you're always going to want to change this. On my, every single one of my emails, I have a, a branding piece that goes on top. I always want them to know that this email is coming from me, not anyone else. Even though it can be related to business, it can be re you know, something silly like this. No matter what it is, I always want it branded to myself. So I'm going to change the image. I already have my image uploaded, but or I'll show you real quick anyways. Um, you're going to go to Browse for a File. And real simple, you, you look for your file to, to upload. Since I already have it, I can go into my images. And then once you already upload it once, you'll have all your images in here, every single one you've already done. So you never have to upload it again. You just go into your library and find it. So my piece that I have is, I call it the Google Plus header. Cause that's what I originally made it for. I'm going to select that. And this is that's how it looks. So alternate text. This is in case they have images turned off you can put text in there. So I always put excellence real estate because that's at the end of the day, it's kind of how I want them to know this email is coming from excellence real estate. URL, if you want them to click on this is where you want them to go. Okay, so if you want them to click on this and go to your website, you can do this. For this particular email, I probably would not have them go anywhere because it's gonna be related to maybe sending them to a different website or if you're you know, a little bit more savvy with your website, you can make a page on your website that has these links. So again, you can get some more traffic back to your website again. Okay, that makes sense? I know that's kind of a little over the top, but that's, again, you would probably want to do that at the end of the day. So we'll go ahead and insert that, and I'll just put my website here for now. And then always you're, gonna, you're going to want to check the box, open a new window. It's just good internet marketing etiquette. Okay, you never want them to open this into the same browser that they already have open. You want it to open up into a new window or a new tab. Okay, so they don't get frustrated if they click on it by accident or anything like that. So we're going to save and insert my image. So now there's my beautiful marketing banner piece so they always know it's coming from me. Okay, and that's what you want at the end of the day. So here's your Black Friday solutions. I would probably leave that maybe the same, maybe just change the time on it, right? And then down here you can change your info you know whatever you want it to be you know great great sale at Best Buy on 60 inch you know Samsung LED TVs get 20% off whatever it is include the link either to Best Buy's website or you can include it back to yours so that they can follow it from there okay and again you're gonna wanna keep doing that so you can also if you needed to you can also add pictures in here as well with the clip art okay it's just like a word editor at that point okay you can add any kind of any type of document that you want it's really easy to do it this make sense? Yeah. Not yet. Yes. Um, do, do you see it's like more successful using it like more in like the real estate like um, you know it's like a new home you know where there's a sound like at, at IKEA <coughs> making it more. When it comes to clients, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Individual clients. Yeah. It all depends on where they're at in the stage of buying. Mm -hmm. So typically, what I do for my list is I actually have it split up into buyers and into sellers people I've sold a home to and see people that I've uh, that I j are selling their home for because they're going to be reacting to different things. Now I'm going to kind of cross mix them eventually sometimes with different things, but there's things for buyers that you're going to things for people that are look that have just bought that you're going to be showing them versus people that have just sold a home. 
Okay, they're, just, they're completely two different things. That, that's the way I look at it. So when it comes to buyers or, you know, like leads, they may not, be, they may not have bought yet. You're going to want to be introducing stuff like rates just change and what it kind of means to them. And maybe include a video of what that means. Like rates have, you know, gone up incredibly in the last three weeks now. They went from 3% to 45 What does that mean in terms of a payment? Okay, maybe you can have a lender on a video and you do a quick one-minute thing and talk about that. Your email. And on this, you could do it to the separate groups you have. Correct. You can do it just just to them, or if you can maybe even make the same email uh, for a seller. Though instead of talking about buying, you're talking about refinancing, right? Now it's going to be different what they can pull out of their home, what what their payment's going to be on that. You know, maybe they were thinking about pulling out two hundred thousand cash, <coughs> but now that rates change, maybe they only want to pull out a hundred thousand now. So it could affect their purchasing power. So some of these things could match up to be the same, but they're not always. You know, you may get a buyer or sorry, a seller that at one point wanted to buy, but for some reason they couldn't sell. I'm sorry, seller that couldn't sell at that time. But you're gonna be selling, sending them tips on what could improve their home. You know, Painting carpet is the easiest, cheapest thing to do to a home to make it worth an extra ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, know, or more, even more in this market, probably $30,000, okay, just because it looks fresh. You know, it's the, that, those are the small differences. And that's what the subject line would be, like five easy steps. Exactly, you always wanna have something very simple like that. You know three easy steps to, to make an extra 50000 on your next sale, right? Or whatever the case is, you want to make it very, you know, enticing to them. And including these little, like, e-books or guides or, you know, videos is a really easy way to do it. Yeah, and that's I, super cool how you can do that. You can put your logo on it. Well, I, and keeping, keeping it with video, too, is it works very well, mm -hmm. you know. that Everyone would rather watch it, and I get the best response out of video, mm -hmm. hands down. Okay, so you can, again, save this. Now you got your email all set up. You're ready to go. Okay. You go ahead and click on next. Now plain text. This is just in case something goes wrong. Okay. That they don't have HTML turned on. They have all their images turned off. You're gonna click, click, sorry, click on copy text from HTML email. And there, excuse me. There you go. Now all the text is copied into this now. So in case they have like a really old phone and they don't get nice email or they have like a 10 year old computer and their email doesn't show that kind of stuff they'll be able to view the plain text version it won't look pretty but they'll at least still get the point okay after you're done you click on next it's going to give you a little checklist make sure everything worked out all right it'll give you a red uh you know like do not enter sign if it did not come across correctly so everything looked good my list checks out correctly my subject line is working correctly my reply to is working correctly my tracking all looks good Everything looks good. Um, the only thing I don't include is the monkey rewards because now I pay for it. I don't have to, so I keep it off. I don't want to. I don't want their logo on my stuff. Okay. And now down at the bottom right, you can send now, which you probably don't want to do in most cases, or you could schedule delivery. Jonathan, so if you don't, if you uh, pay for it, their commercial won't come on on it. Correct. Unless you want it to, because what you can do with them is if you get people to sign up through the email, like they say, oh, wow, this is a nice email provider. I like their email. I want to sign up with them. If they click on that link and go to them and sign up, then you get like a, you know, a dollar off or, or whatever. You get credits, but. So we should all sign up for you? <laughs> it, honestly, it, it doesn't matter to me. It just, just sign up at the end of the day. It, it doesn't bother me. If you want to help me out, go on Yelp and write me a review. That's what I like. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Those are priceless. Okay, I'll go back. Uh, let's see here. So right here. After you click on next, after, or let me go back one more, sorry. Go to design. So if you're on design, the next step where it says next, it would be plain text. Okay. So it's automatically going to take you to that screen. And you're going to always want to click on copy text from HTML. Now it's going to say it was all perfectly done. You'll click on next again to, and you'll go to the confirm screen. This is where your, you know, life or death, whether it's going to make it or it's going to not. Okay. I always schedule my emails. Now in the beginning, you may want to uh, really test all this stuff out. Okay. And you can do A and B, A and B split testing, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but just wanted to walk you through that. But for the most part, people are checking their email when? Early in the morning. That's when they're checking their email. I usually send out all of my email, I try to, at around 8.30 in the morning. That's when I've found 
most of the time, depending on the day, to be the best time to open email. Now, it always varies. Mondays, probably 10 o'clock is, is a better time to send an email. Okay, Tuesdays, probably 8.30 because everyone by Tuesday, they're in, they're in business mode. Friday, probably a really bad day to send an email. Okay, but it, you always have to test it. You're, I'm still constantly testing everything. Okay, you always have to test it. <clears throat> but you can schedule your time date. So if I wanted to schedule this for Friday tomorrow, I could. And if I was going to do it on Friday, I'd probably send it at like 9:30 because people are still working, but they might be already in like weekend mode. So I might send it a little bit later. Okay. And again, this is all different for everyone. I'm marketing on this list to business people. So business people are usually coming in early in the morning, but your regular mom and dad, you know, first time buyer or whatever, they may not get email in the morning. They may not have a professional job. They may check email five o'clock at night. So you always want to test your list. You got to know who you're marketing to. If you're sending out email and nobody's opening it, a red flag that you got to change it. Okay. That all makes sense. Okay. So now on the bottom, you would schedule your delivery and you'd be all set to go. Now I actually want to go back and start a new email now. So I'll save and exit this. Oh, go to my dashboard. <coughs> okay, so I did, did, I just did create a new campaign, but I want to show you what's really powerful is the A and B split testing. Okay. A and B split testing allows you to test your delivery date and times and your subject lines. So this is when you're in the beginning, which you all are, and you all have different lists. So even though I have what works for me, it may not work for you. Okay. In the beginning, you're always going to want to test your d d delivery date and times. You want to know what day is the best time. Uh, what sorry, yeah, what day is the best time to send an email? And then after you figure out what is the best day, guess what you're going to start testing now? What's the best time? Right. You're going to figure out either it's Tuesday, perfect. Now what's what's good? Eight o'clock in the morning. 9 o'clock in the morning, 8.30, 9.30, 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock. You're going to be testing all these different times, okay? And until you really dial it in, and I've done this for years already, so I know my best times are 8.30 to 9.30. That's it. Best times for me to send it out, Tuesdays and Thursdays. That, that's how it's just how it goes. And I don't always do that, but that's the majority of the time how I like to send out my emails, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8.30 to 9.30. Okay, 8.30 on Tuesdays, 9.30 on Wednesdays, Okay. It all, it all just depends on your list. After you figured out the, the, the best time and the best, or sorry, the best day and the best time, next is your subject line. Okay. Now you're going to have the best day and the best time, but you got to know what works the best for that email. Okay. Subject line. And it's little small things. You can have one as, you know, save 15% with this coupon, save $25 with this coupon. It could be the exact same thing, but just because the way you worded it, now people are going to open it differently or they could click through differently. Okay. So you always got to be constantly be changing it. Okay. Constantly tweaking it. You get to select how many people you want to send this test to. Okay. I typically for my list, since it's a little bit larger, I do 20% now. Okay. But if you have a smaller list of say maybe 200, you may have to do 50% because you want to have 50 and 50 on each one. Does that make sense? Okay. For me, 20%, I'm going to have, what is that? Like uh, about 70 and 70 on each side. 140 that makes it something like that okay and then you get to select the winner so you can do it by open rate you can do it by click rate okay and I do it right now that I've a little bit more experience I do it by click rate because now I've, I've figured out my open rates pretty well the thing that I want is click rate I want this email to go to the people that are clicking on my e my stuff the most versus the open rate in the beginning, you're probably going to want to do open rate so you can figure out what subject lines are working the best. Okay, getting these emails opened, then you can start fine tuning your content inside your email to get them to click through. That makes sense? Okay. Good with all this part? Good with the email? Making it? You didn't lose anyone? Speak now, forever hold your peace. It's going to require us to spend some time with the program to get the thing open. Yeah, late night, a lot of coffee, yeah. maybe a couple of pastries, some donuts, you know. I don't know. Uh, I don't do donuts anymore, but you know, I, what did I eat last night? Frozen grapes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but yeah, you're gonna, you know, it's gonna take you a while to get used to it, just like anything. You know, riding a bike for the first time, swimming for the first time, it's gonna take some practice. Okay, who wants to get into analytics? This is like the juiciest part of the entire thing. This is like the sexiest part of the entire presentation, at least for me. So let's go into reports. 
and let's view my la oh, no, let's, let's look at a good email so, so uh so i look better uh, let's see here this one looks pretty good so craigslist unleashed one we'll look at this report all right so here's a quick at a glance so i can see my open rate my industry average is 18 percent my list average is 18 percent and my open rate was 17.9 percent so i was just under par for what i usually do okay my click-through rate, the industry average is 2.3%, my list average is 2%, and my click-through rate on this email was 26 So whatever subject line I put on this, it worked a little bit better, and whatever content I had in the email worked a little bit better than normal to give me that higher click-through rate. Okay. Then you can also see your open rate, right? Who opened my email, who clicked, my, who clicked all my content, and who bounced. Now the nice thing about MailChimp is if they bounce for consecutive emails in a row, it'll automatically kick them off your list. You don't have to clean it yourself. So it, it's real nice. It, it does all the scrubbing for you. Okay. And again, you can see down here and then you can keep going down to performance. You know, when I sent this email out, okay, it was uh, eight o'clock in the morning. My first open didn't happen until almost 8.35. So af after half an hour, I sent this email out. That's why I say 8.30 for me is probably the best time. Okay, that's when most people started opening it. Um, and you can see how, how it went down through the list. Uh, now let's see here. So I want you guys to see this. So this is this is the sexy part right here. So you can go to opened. You can see who opened your email now. How many of you think that's valuable? Right, perfect. Now you know exactly who to market to, right? Ex to the T. All right, you can see exactly everything about them. And before it used to do, I guess they don't do it anymore. It used to show you their star rating. Oh, you know, it does actually. There you go, member rating. This is what I love. Now I can see really who's opening my stuff and who really loves me, right? If they got five stars, this is a person that's always opening my email on a constant basis and they're always clicking on my email on a constant basis. So if this was a customer for you, uh, Iris, what would you do? I would probably find a way to call them up or send them an email with a special offer specifically tailored just to them bingo that's it so you know exactly what to do right yeah so let's go back that was open rate so those are people that are hot but not that hot people that are real hot are the people that actually clicked on it mm -hmm. they went through now you get to see where they're all clicking at which is not really that important but you get to see what links they're clicking on so in my email i have different links this is the highest one oops Okay, well that went the wrong way. Let me go back here. Okay, here we go. So you click on the percentage, I'm sorry, and you'll be able to see who is actually clicking on it. So here we are, you get to see everyone again. You can go into, okay, they changed that. Before you used to be able to click on member rating and it would sort it out by highest to lowest. I guess you can't now. What determines this member rating? Their overall life on your email list. Okay. So I'll get to that in a second too with your list, okay? But what you what I like to be able to do per email is so you can go through it and you can say, okay, maybe they opened it, right, but they didn't sign up. So now I can, if I really wanted to, I can call every single one of them because I have their phone number and I can find out why they didn't want to sign up. Was it too lengthy of a process, right? Did I, they have to do too many steps? Was it maybe just not interested in them? I mean, you had their attention at one point why they opened it, right? Whether it was getting more leads or whatever it was, you had their attention so you if you have the time you really want to find out why they didn't sign up okay good with that is that is that pretty nice so let's go back to our list this is my list that's my nice one the one I use almost all the time okay so you can see in the past like two months I've actually lost some subscribers I haven't been importing my list as regularly from all these events but as soon as I import them it'll all go back up again you can start seeing everyone uh, at a glance what they're doing what they're viewing at nice thing is 49 percent of my email they're all being viewed on the iPhone so people say iPhones aren't that popular they're extremely popular you want to probably build everything you do f for Apple products even though a lot of people have Android you can see the difference okay between mobile platforms it's a huge difference now let me go into my subscribers and now again you can see now you can click on member rating to see who's who's not too hot and who's very hot 
All right, so it's going to rate them, and then bam, you get all their information. So most of my people, especially now, I have all their info. Okay, I can go through, and I can see all their information. And now I now I know. Hey, uh, I don't have. Let me see. Abel Mendoza. I don't know his cell phone or company name, but I probably should send him more emails more periodically. All the people that have phone numbers, I should probably call all of them on a consistent basis. You know, once a month, and figure out what I can do to tailor their needs more. Again, this is for my agents so for, for people that I'm you know trying to recruit at the end of the day so these people I can pick up the phone and call and talk to if these are buyers that were maybe um, fell out of the pipeline and there's they're this hot on your email they're probably back in the ready the buying game same thing with sellers same thing with anything that you're doing you can track this stuff and figure out what's that what's working and what's not working that all make sense so I got through this pretty quickly today Did I go through this too fast you guys all got it you guys all going to do it? Definitely. All right. I'm going to pass out my cards, and I want to see you guys' first email, just mm -hmm. just to see who's doing it and who's not, so I know who's who, who applied it all, because the worst thing to do is to come here for an hour and then go back to your office and not do it. Mm -hmm. So who's going to do it and then by tomorrow? Get one. Three of you? By tomorrow? By tomorrow, you got to send one out. That's a action. you got to do it. <laughs> next week? <laughs> you got to do it. If you don't do it by tomorrow, you probably won't do it. You got to do it. Yeah, I got to do Excel first. As long as you, the the hardest part is building momentum. So if you start building your list and you really tackle going through all your business cards, because I've done it before and it's a pain, and you know what, you'll really start doing it because you'll say, "I just wasted three hours of my day putting all these people on an Excel spreadsheet." You're damn right. I'm going to put these people on an email database and get this thing going out now. You you're you'll you will do it. I guarantee it. And you'll start immediately seeing results. Okay. How many of you have websites? Almost all of us. Okay. So you are all going to want to track where this is going. You're sending it back to your website. Okay. I tell everyone internet marketing. The key to it is everything has to go back to your website. I don't care what you're doing. Okay. If it's Trulia, Craigslist, email marketing, YouTube, it all goes back to your website. It all goes back to your website because that's a central hub. Okay. Even with Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. Your website is a central hub. That is where you have 100% of their attention. And I always say that, but that's just, it's that true. Okay, if you can have a buyer on the phone or you can have them in your office, where do you want them? You want them in your office. At the end of the day, you want them in your office. Cell phone is just a way for them to connect. Same thing with email. Do you want to be responding to email or do you want them in your office? Do you want to be responding via text or do you want them in your office? Okay, you want them where you can control them. You want a controlled atmosphere, controlled environment. And your website is that. No matter where they click, no matter where they go, they're always going to be on your website. You have 100% of their attention. Okay? Can you also monitor um, your website page, each page through Google Analytics? Yes. That's why I view it. So the reason why I got really good at internet marketing was five years ago now, maybe six now, I'm losing track. I was my dad's assistant. All I did was Craigslist, and we had our KW website. And... On Craigslist, I would put up maybe two or three hundred ads a day, and I would literally I would generate maybe two to three hundred visits a day. Like it was cr insane amount of traffic back to my website. But here's what happened: I started tracking it. Guess what the average time on site was? Less than ten seconds. So I'm generating thousands of hits to my website, but I can't get anyone to stay. So for the next nine months, it literally took me nine months of fine tuning it to figure out what worked, what didn't work, what pages to land on, what text, everything. I mean, I, I was, that's why I'm so in depth with analytics because with analytics, I was able to see all those different things. I was able to make a tweak on one page and see it go lose a minute or maybe gain a minute and a half. Okay, and you can track, and it's, it's really incredible what you can do with tracking. And you make the smallest tweak. You could make a, a background from yellow to red and it can make a, a 30 second difference in time. You know, you could change one word around and it can make the biggest difference. You know, instead of sign up now, you could put, you know, free trial period and it can make a huge difference on signups. You know, whatever, whatever it is you're doing, you really, w you have to track it. And especially when it comes to this, okay, because you always want to increase your time. Now, you don't want to have too much time on your website because then, you know, I feel just like a phone call. If they're on your site too long, you're giving away too much info. You're always going to want to be adding new content. Your website's always going to want to be adding new content. So, if, you know, I recommend WordPress going with a blog. Um, I have another class specifically for that. 
Um, it's actually two classes for WordPress, um, but that's the way to go. And I'm right, right now, I would say I generate maybe 2,000 visitors a month, and about 75% of it's all organic, coming from search engines. You know, it's not it's not really me pushing my content. It's organic, or you know, organically being found. People searching for content and they're finding it on my website. The other 25% is mainly from Craigslist. The ref, you know the referral traffic I get from Facebook is not very high. If I looked at my analytics right now, it's probably like 2%. Okay, email marketing is probably about another 10% or so. So it's very, uh, most of my content's all uh, search engine driven. And that's how you want to do it. You want Google to love you. You want Yahoo and Bing are like the small guys in the block, but you want Google especially to be in love with your website. And being a content creator is, is how you do it being consistent yeah so if you start off with your blog and you do five five posts a week you, sh you now have to keep doing it at that same pace that's unfortunate but that's what you have to do otherwise Google says oh they started off with the bang and then they fizzled out so we don't have to go back as often <laughs> I'm sorry right so when you're <laughs> when you're doing it you want to create content but you want to try and do it at a at a steady pace for my website right now, I think I have about 156 pages now, and I'm pro at probably adding about two or three a month. I'm not too crazy, but for most people, that still is a lot of content. So it's, it all just depends on what you're doing. And with the new website I'm building, I'm going to be doing a video blog post probably almost every day. My web developer will, will be putting up about two, p two, maybe two pieces a day as well. So we're going to be, you know, by one year, we're going to try and hit like a thousand articles in one year. So it's going to be insane amount of content. Google, actually. Google well, that's why I like YouTube. Yeah. You know, that's like putting it directly into Google. <laughs> Since that's, that's exactly why everyone does it. YouTube is, actually YouTube is bigger than Google search itself. I don't know if you guys know that. It's actually twice the size. It may even be larger now. I haven't looked at the, the stats <coughs> lately, but about a year ago, it was twice the size for searches. So pretty incredible stuff. So we're all good. No questions. I nailed it on the head again. And I'm I'm getting really good at this stuff. <laughs>